My name is Joe Rosenberg. Uh, I started in 1957 at the uh, Missile and Surface Radar Division in Moorestown. Uh, stayed there till uh, 64. Left uh, that division uh, because of McNamara's cut. I was out for a year from RCA and then returned to uh, Heightstown, the Aerospace Division in uh, Heightstown, uh, New Jersey. In 1970, I returned to Moorestown and finished my stint with RCA and GE and retired in 93. Okay. And were there any, uh, like what was your first project that you worked on? The first project was uh, the ANF PS-16, which is the tracking radar. We built uh, a large group of these to track the uh, missile, uh, the space flights of uh, Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo, uh, putting in uh, 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 radars in Bermuda, Florida, uh, and down in the uh, further down range. Uh, that was a uh, one, uh, tracking radar, uh, which became, was this one of the breadboard, uh, bread making things there in, in Moorestown at the time. Uh, I then worked on uh, some of the other programs. Uh, we evolved into other tracking radars and uh, ultimately into the uh, BEMUSE, the Ballistic Missile Early Warning System, which goes to clear Alaska, uh, uh, Greenland, and Scotland. And that was to detect any uh, Russian missiles or aircraft coming over the, the poles. Um, um. Were there any other big projects that you got to work on? Because you said you went through different divisions. Well, uh, in Moorestown, I also worked uh, uh, on a um, uh, Marine Corps radar, uh, and uh, this was used in Vietnam uh, for uh, uh, designating aircraft to do to bomb. It was a portable radar you set up on a hill. I also worked on, um, we did some preliminary work for the <coughs> equipment uh, in Heightstown because they hadn't developed a uh, manufacturing facility there. So we produced some of the space, early space program uh, uh, systems, or really uh, cabinet, uh, not cabinets, but assemblies and things that they used in the cabinets and, and in spacecraft. Um, I also uh, was on a temporary assignment uh, in um, Cambridge, Ohio. We had a plant. We built some walkie-talkies in Camden. I didn't work on that project, but we moved the production program out to, uh, there, and I went out with some troubleshooters for then the president of uh, the uh, military division, uh, Art Malcarney and Nate Lev, uh, six of us went out to straighten out that project because uh, it went afoul. They were supposed to build 10,000 of them, and they actually bombed and we had to get them back on on uh, track and we uh, ultimately uh, got them back after three months of hammering the, the guys to do the right thing. <laughs> uh, I also, uh, let's see what else, oh, uh, I also worked on uh, mod modifications to the ANF PF-16, which was the tracking radars to extend the range from 500 miles uh, to 1,000 miles, and ultimately that uh, those modifications ultimately were used at 240,000 miles to track uh, uh, our launch of 
a spacecraft to the moon. Um, um, and were there any um, co-workers that kind of stick out in your memory that you'd like to talk well, about? Well, yeah, my, uh, the guy that hired me <laughs> was uh, Al Farkas. He hired me. I was working in Texas for the government at the time, and they gave me an all-expense-paid move to Moorestown. Uh, my wife's from Texas, so we moved up here, and we moved, uh, we've lived here ever since. Uh, I also uh, worked for Dave Smith, who was the head of uh, manufacturing uh, engineering, and uh, ultimately I was a test engineer, then I became promoted to uh, project engineer, and uh, RCA paid for my uh, uh, schooling at uh, Drexel. It was then Drexel Institute of Technology, and I ultimately got my degree from uh, Drexel when it became a university. <laughs> so uh, other projects I worked on in Heightstown was on the um, uh, uh, the uh, weather radar, the NASA weather radar under uh, Abe Schnaff, who was considered uh, the father of Tyros, and he uh, <clears throat> he helped uh, the national uh, NASA. Uh, he provided this system that would circle the Earth and take pictures which becomes our modern weather pictures that you see daily on television. It was Tyros and then we did some work for GE at the time, which was Nimbus. And um, we also did uh, the lunar orbiter, the first lunar orbiter that orbited the moon before we landed there. And then we, I worked on a space uh, camera that we, they carried, the astronauts carried to uh, uh, carried to the moon, you know, and, and took the first pictures of leaving the Earth. I also uh, uh, worked on the Viking program. Uh, we bid the Viking program, which was then to Martin Marietta, which later became part of Lockheed Martin, but uh, that was the, uh, the spacecraft that went to Mars, and I did some of the development of the uh, location and heat and uh, noise that was used for some of our equipments. We, didn't pr we weren't the prime contractor, but we did uh, a major part of the electronics that went on that, that trip. Uh, returned to Moorestown um, when that program uh, was pushed back uh, uh, several years uh, and uh, started to work on the Aegis program. Uh, I was uh, worked in the, uh, we called it the MFAR, which is the Multifunction Array Radar, which was later designated as the SPY-1, which is the, the basic uh, Phased array radar was used, used on all Aegis ships today. Uh, we built uh, quite a few um, ships in uh, uh, ships worth in Moorestown and shipped them to Pascagoula, Mississippi. Uh, I was there for the first uh, uh, commissioning of the first cruiser, which is right over here in Philadelphia now in the mothballs. Uh, <coughs> He produced 26 of those ships, and ultimately, we're in the hundreds of ships. We're now modifying those to, uh, we're, uh, well, Lockheed Martin, the successor, is still building, uh, like we've eliminated the high power tubes and we use solid state uh, distributed power transmitters, which are much more uh, convenient and efficient, and uh, we're still uh, operating with, uh, and I say we, Lockheed Martin, successor of our RCA, 
is still working with the Navy to produce uh, uh, various ships that worked on uh, the literal ship, which is the small, uh, low draft. It can go in the coast where it doesn't drag its bottom. And uh, we're producing uh, some of those. I worked on some of the initial parts for Lockheed Martin after I came back uh, with, as a stint as a high school teacher in Philadelphia and Heightstown. Uh, GE paid for my uh, my teaching certificate, you know, and I went here to Rowan to get um, certified as a, a math teacher. I took one course down here <laughs> early on in that career, but then I went back 14 years after my retirement, and um, just until two or three years ago, I worked for Lockheed Martin. Um, so you talked a lot about the the major work that you did. Uh, as how did that work turn into like a good social life with RCA? A good, I'm sorry. How did what? How, what was the social life like outside of RCA? Oh, we had uh, uh, the RCA family. We used to have uh, big uh, parties, like especially in Aegis. We took over the Marion caterers, and and uh, we had uh, Thanksgiving parties. You know, dressed up in costume. Uh, had lots of friends that I still have and friends that are no longer with us, you know. But uh, <clears throat> many friends and, and, and had a good social life at RCA. I also, I also, one other thing uh, notably that I did when we were doing Bermuse, uh, our technicians hadn't had any training in transistors. So I studied transistors and then I prepared a... Um, course where I taught the, uh, the engineer, uh, the text, testers and, and uh, technicians what a transistor was and had them, you know, so that they could service them. Um, so what was the workplace like at RCA? Work, workplace was uh, uh, like, I, I call it, the, we had a family magazine called the RCA Family and it was truly a family. It was a, not, not like today, <laughs> but it, it's been, it was like a family. Uh, you sort of thought you were going to be there from when you first started until you retired, and that's what happens to me, and, uh, and it was a good life. M made a good living. Like I say, I went to school. I paid for my schooling. Uh, it was uh, a, a wonderful experience. Not too many companies, including Lockheed Martin, are like that today. Uh, so you said you moved from Texas to Morristown. Um, what did you, could you see any visible impact that RCA had on South Jersey? Oh yeah, it's, uh, uh, I never worked in, in uh, Camden. Uh, I visited there a few times, you know, for various things, but. Uh, it, it really was one of the major companies in South Jersey. It provided employment. It provided uh, public uh, help. It, it was a really benevolent organization. Under Art Malcarney, who was uh, started out as a, a, a wireman on, a, on the assembly line, became an inspector, rose to no college education, became a... Um, manager in manufacturing, and ultimately rose to be the head of the Defense Electronic Products report directly to Sarnoff, who was the head of RCA at the time. You know, and then he passed away, and we had a series of some good and some not good <laughs> people that ran RCA at the time. And um, I guess... Uh your overall uh, journey at RCA, how would you kind of sum it up as your, your career? Uh, it was ma miraculous. I mean, it uh, couldn't, have, couldn't have been better. I mean, I, like I say, with the, the, work, the type of work, the interest that I had in the work, uh, the, the people that I work with, uh, I can't say enough. The people I work for, except for 
one or two exceptions. <laughs> you always get those. And, but <clears throat> it, it was, it, it, everybody, we, I hope that the country returns to where there are companies like RCA, but I doubt it. It's, it's mostly dog-eat-dog -dog and bottom line, and we have a lot of uh, non... At, when I worked there, it was mostly engineers who rose to high management positions and knew what engineering was. Today, it's bottom line engineering, MBAs that are don't realize sometimes what, what what's good uh, what's good for the country what's good for the company what's good for the product uh, they're looking bottom line next few years to get their to get their bonus and get out that's a neutron jack was like that he jack welsh when he took over ge sold us down the river he uh <clears throat> took RCA and chopped it up and sold it in pieces and made more money than it was worth. So, uh, uh, like I say, uh, the airline, it's not limited to RCA, uh, airlines, you, uh, some of the people bought airlines just to buy the airplanes because they were cheaper than they could buy them from the, from the companies. And they made more money than the uh, stock was worth, so they were called corporate raiders. You know, the, uh, I mean, it's it's a different it's a different life. There were some vicious people in the old days, but the thing is, there were a lot of benevolent people too that took care of the company, the country, and uh, involved in politics. Uh, they were backed um, meaningful. Uh, representatives so it, it's it, it like I say what is the uh, Jimmy Stewart movie it's a wonderful life that's it. <laughs>